The U.S. is preparing for World War III while expanding draft registration. So I guess we should probably talk about the way NATO powers are rapidly escalating toward hot war with Russia at the same time the U.S. is expanding its draft policies to make it easier to force more Americans to go and fight in a giant war. In an article titled NATO, 500,000 Troops on High Readiness for War with Russia, Anti-War's Kyle Anzalone highlights NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg's comments on Friday, stating the alliance actually has a far greater number of troops it could deploy than the 300,000 it had previously set as its goal. Allies are offering forces to NATO's command at a scale not seen in decades, Stoltenberg said on Friday. Today we have 500,000 troops at high readiness across all domains, significantly more than the goal that was set at the 2022 Madrid summit. Anzalone writes the following, quote, The alliance hit its goal as its members significantly ratcheted up support for Kiev in recent weeks. The U.S. and several other nations also recently gave a green light for Ukraine to use their weapons to strike targets inside Russia. The Netherlands and Denmark plan to supply Kiev with F-16s in the coming months, and say the advanced aircraft could be used to bomb Russia. Stoltenberg added that he welcomes the policy shift and said it should not be considered an escalation by Russia. End quote. This comes shortly after we learned that NATO is developing multiple land corridors to rush troops to the front line of a future hot war with Russia in Eastern Europe. It also comes, as we learn from Stoltenberg, that NATO is considering increasing the number of nuclear weapons it has on standby, meaning ready to use in a nuclear war. White House spokesman John Kirby bizarrely told the press that this aggressive move should not be seen as a provocation toward Russia because NATO is a defensive alliance. How can this not be perceived as a provocation or an escalation of tension in Europe, Kirby was asked regarding Stoltenberg's recent comments. Who would perceive it as a provocation or an escalation, Kirby responded. Russia, the reporter answered. Oh, Russia, Russia, the same country that invaded Ukraine which posed absolutely no threat to them, Kirby replied indignantly, saying, NATO is a defensive alliance and NATO countries are some of the most sophisticated in the world when it comes to military capabilities. And it would be irresponsible and imprudent if we weren't constantly talking to our NATO allies about how to make sure we can meet our commitments to one another across a range of military capabilities. And that's as far as I'll go. One of the dumbest things the Empire asks us to believe these days is that surrounding its official enemies with existentially threatening war machinery should always be seen as a defensive measure. The last time a credible military threat was placed near the U.S. border... Washington responded so aggressively the world almost ended. Yet nations like Russia and China are expected to let the U.S. and its allies amass military threats right near their borders without even regarding this as a provocation. This and other frightening nuclear escalations with Russia are happening at the same time U.S. lawmakers are working to expand draft registration to women and to automate registration for men both of which would help broaden the pool of warm bodies the U.S. would have available to throw into a hot war with a major military power. Edward Hasbrook writes the following for anti-war, quote, The Senate Armed Services Committee approved a version of the NDAA, which would expand selective service registration to include young women as well as young men. This version of the NDAA will now go to the floor as the starting point for consideration and approval by the full Senate. Also on June 14th, the full House of Representatives approved a different version of the NDAA that would make selective service registration automatic, while keeping it for men only, end quote. As Reasons C.J. Chiaramella explained in an article about this move to automate draft registration, the official reason for this push is to make the system run more efficiently, but the other, unspoken effect would be removing young men's choice to engage in civil disobedience. If the U.S. war machine starts a new horrific conflict that the Zoomers don't believe in, ideally you want to make it as hard as possible for them to resist being fed to the cannons. The draft is one of those things that gets more disgusting the more you think about it, especially in a nation whose government is as belligerent and psychopathic as the USA's. 
These freaks can engage in any amount of brinkmanship they like with nations they have no business fighting, all without any of their actions ever being put to a vote from the general public. And then, if it goes hot, they get to turn to a bunch of kids in their teens and early 20s and say, this isn't our problem, it's your problem. Go fight and die and kill for your country. They can start a war with their own recklessness and then chill out and sip martinis while your kids go get killed in it. This is evil, this is ugly, and it needs to stop.